Spring is in the air and pollen is in my eyes, so I joined the Great Spring Game Jam, where I had three weeks to make a game based on the theme of spring. So buckle up and let me tell you the story of Bumbling About. <laughs> When I hear the word spring, I think of Mario Galaxy. Specifically, the honey hive, and the bees, and the flowers, and that mushroom that allows for pitiful bursts of flight. I'd never made a third-person 3D platformer before, so I figured now would be a good time to try. So I got to work with that particular set of levels as my reference. As per usual, I borrowed some movement code from my previous project, slapped it on a capsule, and uh, ran in aimless circles for a few hours. But if I was going to copy Mario Galaxy's movement, or rather be vaguely inspired by it, of course, I need to study it. So every once in a while, I would pull out my switch and run around to compare the controls and the game feel and whatnot. Studying how other games' movement systems work is super interesting and very informative. The original controls were quite simple. Movement inputs affect speed very directly, so you move fast, you jump high, you turn tight, and you can easily make mid-air adjustments. Objectively, you have a lot of control over the character, but a lot of control doesn't necessarily equate to good control, especially in a third-person game. The Mario series is the cream of the crop for 3D movement, and while Galaxy's controls aren't as well-tuned as, say, Mario Odyssey, it still outperforms a good 99% of the platformers out there. It's little things, like the way Mario accelerates to get to full speed and slides a little when he stops. How the faster you're going, the larger your turns are. When you jump, you go up and then down with the perfect acceleration. You have just enough mid-air control, and when you land, it affects the running speed ever so slightly, just to give you that sense of shifting weight. Short jumps, high jumps, long jumps, and wall jumps all have unique purposes and carefully measured distances. You may not have the most control over precise movement adjustments, but the control you do have is predictable. It feels natural, and it becomes second nature very quickly, which is exactly what you want. I spent close to two weeks working on the movement. I experimented with different acceleration curves, I did side-by-side -side comparisons with Mario Galaxy to visualize jump speed, response times, and the whole nine yards. Now, I didn't copy everything from Mario Galaxy, you know, just the walk, run, jump, long jump, and B movement, but of course I also made small adjustments to all of these to make them feel a little more original and fitting to how I imagined them for my game. I used Mario Galaxy as my point of reference for good movement, and then carved my own clay from there. And after putting in all of this time and effort, the movement turned out to be... Not great. Well, I liked it, but the general consensus was that it was okay at best. Mr. Breen. No, give me back. Okay. <laughs> this just is not nice. Spending a lot of time on your movement system is a good idea. I think most game devs have heard that classic story of Miyamoto spending 10,000 years perfecting Mario 64's movement before the developers were even allowed to touch anything else in the game, or something like that. However, I think if you spend too much time playing around with your janky movement system, you run the risk of getting really good at using those controls and lose touch with the average player who will be expecting the character to control a certain way. It can be difficult to avoid this though. Controls, be they good or bad, are usually the most utilized part of the game. And with that ever-present fundamental necessity for interaction, it is so incredibly easy for your brain to adapt to what you've been provided and lose your ability to properly analyze the quality of that feature. So essentially what I'm saying is I spent nearly two weeks dedicated to not only creating mediocre controls, but mastering them and convincing myself that they were good. Get on my level. I wasn't wasting time though. Between sessions of running around, doing tricks in an empty field, I was creating our protagonist, a uh, as usual, my main inspiration was Mario Galaxy, but I did have other references too, like actual bees for example. I noticed that they're quite fluffy up close, and this right here inspired the character's signature mustache. And I just realized that makes it seem a lot more like Mario. Damn it. I made some animations for the character, standing, walking, running, jumping, long jumping, flying, and of course, boogieing. I figured out how to make Blender save more than one animated action, always enable fake user, and how to make GLTF store more than one animation. Press push down on all actions. And then I brought our fuzzy little friend into the game. I just used a basic animation player for all the animations, since I didn't really feel like learning Godot's blend tree just yet. And it looks alright. I made the animations change speed depending on how fast the character was moving, and used the call function track on the animator to make a footstep sound play exactly when the player's foot hits the ground. Less than a week before the deadline, a blip in power caused my computer to shut down and corrupt my project. <sighs> so 
I rebuilt my project using a combination of older backups and scraps. Always make backups. It only took me three hours to catch up again, but that's also three hours where I could have been doing something so much cooler. I made a test level. I made a second test level with platforms. I made a third test level composed of modified duplicates of that second test level, and then I ran around it for like an hour. I don't know why, but running around impossible mega structures is really fun to me. But it's not productive work. Three days before the deadline, I awoke from my trance and started actually getting things done. I made close to 30 textures for the game, most of which did not get used. Then it was level design time. Kind of. Let me tell you right now, level design is a beast of a skill set. It is mentally taxing, it is physically demanding, and I do not understand why people do this for fun. There's a lot that you have to keep in mind. The most obvious one being the movement. What is the optimal platform size? What is the optimal distance for a jump? What about height? What about both? What if someone plays the game and doesn't know that holding a jump makes you go higher? How far then? Max flight distance, long jump range, long jump build up space. All of these measurements that you have to make, remember, and constantly test and retest. And that's just the easy stuff. You need to learn how to get inside the player's head, find out what they're thinking, find out what they're not thinking, and then construct your environment to accommodate. You don't want the player going the wrong way or getting lost or, worst of all, getting bored. So you have to predict their actions to read their mind, if you will. And if you don't have any play testers, you have to read your own mind. And my own mind was tired of taking measurements. So I took a break to do some 3D modeling. I started work on a house that I never ended up finishing and made a little ladybug. That was not a good use of my time. I made a reference board, I modeled it, I textured it, and I even animated it with several different AI behaviors in mind. I was proud of the animations too. Look at them. I did research for this. Google, Wikipedia, YouTube. Okay, oh, oh, steady. Elytra out, wings unfolding. Yep, yep, one leg up, another leg up. Start your flap in, yep, gain your balance. Boom, lift off. But I didn't have time to fully implement enemy behavior. So in game, they just sit there and stare at you. Two days remaining. I don't know why I wasn't stressed out. The game looked like this. So I made a list of the things that the game needs. Title screen, platforming, pause screen, collectibles, windscreen, and of course, etc. Some of the ideas that I had were still floating around loosey goosey in my mind. And here's what I've learned about loosey goosey ideas. They only cause trouble. If you have an idea, write it down. Draw it, say it out loud, kinesthetic it, I don't know. Get it out of your head so that you have room for productive thoughts. I'm serious. Ideas make you lazy and you need goals. So I took all of my level design ideas and I scribbled them onto a paper. So this is my official level concept art. Take a gander. I whipped it up in five minutes and it took me to the finish line. Over here are some logs, stumps, and trees. So boom, I made logs, stumps, and trees. Lily pads and lotuses, lily pads and lotuses. That looks really nice. I modeled the world, I added a lake, and I tossed it into a godot for the player to wander around in so I could get a sense of scale. But I did not dilly-dally. Need a break from modeling? Add in a shadow decal to improve depth perception. I used the decal CO shader, by the way, so thank you to Master J, Banked, and Mizziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziz
With the level as complete as I could make it, I added the final touches of polish. And by polish, I mean basic game functionality. I changed the camera's position and angle to get a wide shot view of the world, and wrote the values into the code so that I could switch to the angle when you begin the game. I also wrote a script that would make the camera face the player when you win, but I didn't have time to test any of it. With 15 minutes remaining, I had to export the builds. WebGL, check. Windows, check. Mac? No? Okay, screw Mac. Linux? Perfect. I uploaded the files, and submitted my game three minutes before the deadline. I gave myself a minute to relax, and decided to do a little playthrough of my game to see if it all worked. Let's see it. <laughs> That's perfect. So how do I feel this whole thing went? Well, I was feeling pretty rough when I started working on the game, and I wasn't even sure if I'd be able to get a hold of myself and make anything notable by the deadline, but I did. I made a third-person 3D platformer. This is the first time I have ever successfully made one of those. So, even though it's a bit janky, unrefined, and lacking in breadth of content, I'm happy with it. If I were to give this game a grade, I would give it a... B. Yeah. And with that long overdue pun out of the way, I'd like to inform you that a link to the game is in fact in the description. And if you play it, I highly recommend using a controller instead of a keyboard. And that's the game. Ciao for now.